I'm Mark Ramsey. I am really so proud and excited today to have with me the legendary Robert McKee. Well, you are. Um, who is Robert McKee? Robert McKee is a teacher of story. Past students of Mr. McKee's include folks you will know, people like Peter Jackson, Russell Brand, Jimmy Fallon, Julie Roberts, Jeffrey Rush, Kirk Douglas, David Bowie, Meg Ryan, John Cleese, and that's just a tiny fraction of the, the number of people who have been at this man's seminars. Robert wrote the book literally on story. It's called Story, uh, Style, Structure, Substance, and the Principles of Screenwriting. A lot of alliteration there, by the way, Robert. Yeah, I was just sticking the memory. <laughs> Again, look at what he knows. Um, Robert works with storytellers in all fields, however, not just screenwriters, although prominently there. And on March 19th in L.A., this is something we're going to be talking about at the end of this conversation. Robert's holding a story in business seminar. I will be there. You should be, too, and we'll talk about that. So, Robert, I want to begin at the beginning, like any yes. good storyteller. What huh. makes story so powerful to move and persuade people? In your in your in one of your videos, you talk about how our uh, traditional crutch tools like PowerPoint for example, are used to persuade people, but they're fundamentally flawed, and in fact, story is much more powerful, much more compelling. Can you talk about why that is and how that is? Yeah, I wouldn't say that um, that PowerPoint rhetoric is fundamentally flawed. I mean, if you can uh, if you can build an argument with inductive logic, point, 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 data, data, authority, authority, therefore, think this, do this, and get people to act the way you need them to act, then I say more power to you. And um, you know, PowerPoint rhetoric is, uh, is an appeal to the mind. Um, but the trouble is that people resist that. They resist data. They don't want to have to uh, memorize facts. Often when they're sitting there listening to your PowerPoint, they have their own facts and they're silently arguing with you in your head. And so there are problems often trying to just appeal to the rational side of people. Mm -hmm. Story mm -hmm. takes all that data and then dramatizes it or storifies it so that instead of uh, making a list of facts, you tell a story that moves dynamically, positive, negative, and arouses great curiosity. How will this turn out? It draws the audience or the listener into empathy with your core character, and um, and so it hooks them intellectually and involves them emotionally, so that when you reach the climax, the uh, the the message at the climax moves them to act. Mm -hmm. I, when I teach, uh, what you're going to hear, Mark, um, on that 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 mm -hmm. seminar uh, next month, is what I call the purpose told story. It's not. Uh, fiction as entertainment. It's using the story form to communicate uh, a lot of uh, information, but, but dramatized, storified, uh, so that at the end of the story, people are moved to take an action, to buy your product, to hire your service, and that that is the purpose of the business told story. If the business told story simply amuses people or entertains, it's pointless. Right. Sure. So, so the uh, the the story in business is is very much is very different than the story in Hollywood or the story in uh, you know in, on a bookshelf. Uh, it is designed to um, hook interest, to move people emotionally, involve them, and then trigger them to act. Uh, and um, that last step is the most important of all. Now, I can so, hear. I can so that's why it works. It sorry, to interrupt. Um, no, it works because story is the natural form of thought. When you remember the past, how do you remember it as data? No, mm -hmm. you remember it as a series of events that brought about a change in your life. When you're thinking toward the future, how do you anticipate life again as data? No, you see it as a series of hypothetical possible events that will bring you to a certain point in your life you want to be. Um, and so the, the natural way in which the mind uh, takes in reality, sorts it out, and makes sense out of it is in story form. So when a business person communicates to their market 
or to their employees for that matter, or to the board of directors, or to investors. When they communicate in story form, it fits the mind. Hmm. Now, story I can, fits the mind. I can imagine, I can hear people saying, well, PowerPoint is easy. I know how to build PowerPoint. I mean, PowerPoint even comes with templates. Story making seems to be harder. What are the it's, rules? What are the rules of thumb in in creating a, a a great compelling story? That is more difficult. I mean, you you've been doing PowerPoint rhetoric ever since you were in junior high school and you had to write essays. I mean, essentially, the PowerPoint is just a um, it's just a, an essay with illustrations. Um, and story is more difficult because um, you have to be able to pull back from life to tell story, you've got to be able to pull back from uh, the, the world around you and look at it in terms of all of the levels of interaction, all the sources of conflict, all of the, um, uh, the, the, the energies that flow positive and negative dynamically through life from inner life, personal relationships, social relationships, the physical world, You've got to be able to see it first. I mean, you can't, if you can't think story, you can't tell story. So the first step is not just to learn certain story components, which I certainly happy to, you know, and I teach them. But the first step is to be able to pull back from life and see it as a potential for story. And that takes wisdom. It takes a wide angle, deep angle view of life. And then you have to know what to look for. You have to identify a core character uh, that you're going to tell the story about. You have to identify the, the, the action that, that you want ultimately the audience to take. You have to identify who that audience is. And then you have to ask yourself that big question um, that to get a starting event, when did things go wrong? How did life go out of balance? And then tell a story that ends on the on a positive ending that somehow restores the balance of life with a difference that motivates people to act. And being able to uh, to take this complexity of life, sort it into um, uh, all of the forces that act on people, find that key moment when things go out of kilter, and that hooks the audience's attention. The audience immediately pays attention when things go out of balance, when there's when there's clear change in the values in somebody's life, um, and getting people's attention is the the first step, the most critical step in business today. Today, attention is the greatest asset a business can can have. The ability to cause people to pay attention, to react, to listen, to get involved, and then to, to move to action. And the way you get attention in story is you throw life out of balance. And immediately, mm -hmm. people react. They go, oh, how is this going to turn out? How, if possible, will the balance of life be restored? Now you've got their interest. Um, just, uh, just putting data in front of people does not hook their interest necessarily so um it's so it's more difficult no question about it you have to have a wisdom you have to have a a, a wide view of life you've got to be able to sort out what's what's important and what's trivial concentrate on the important and then tell a story dynamically that really pays off in in action and so um and so uh people in business who can think in story form and communicate in story form have an enormous advantage. Interestingly, um, you talk about the importance of attention in business. I'm sure you would argue attention is the challenge no matter what the category, business, entertainment, uh, pop culture, uh, with, the, with the clutter of items competing for that attention. I mean, isn't that the most difficult thing to capture, period, nowadays? Just, just try to get your kids' attention. Right? I mean, do you listen to me? I mean, you know, yes, it is. It is. It's very hard. Uh, but the mind keys on stories. The mind keys on change. 
And when you say once upon a time, you know, this happened, suddenly people naturally want to know the outcome of that. Mm -hmm. And so if you can master this technique, if you can think story, tell story, uh, you you find uh, that you can get attention and hold attention and move people to take action um, with um, with real effect. But it takes practice, it takes study, it takes um, uh, learning. I mean, everybody has this talent innately in them. You always, you had it since you were a kid. But, it, but your schooling drove it out of you. Because when you wrote essays, when you gave reports and whatnot, if you started to tell story, they would um, they would tell you, no, 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 just give me the facts, build, pr prove your point, um, and that uh, story was a kind of, you know, diversion. Mm -hmm. uh, so you were taught not to do that. And you were applauded for inductive logic and being able to draw a conclusion from a set of facts. And so, um, and so you have to go back to when you were a kid and realize that you've always been able to do this uh, and resurrect that natural talent uh, and then train it and focus it. I mean, because you can't just, it's not just street corner, you know, BS. Mm -hmm. It's got to be an effective business purpose told story. And that takes some, some it, it takes as much effort or more to design a story than it does to design PowerPoint. Uh, and and uh, once you once you master the technique or bring it back to life within yourself, it gets easier and easier and becomes natural. Hmm. Let's talk about audio a little bit. That's the space I do most of my work in. Um, I'm assuming that stories function a little well, work a little bit differently in different media because different media have different strengths and different weaknesses. What do you see as kind of the special capabilities of of audio when it comes to story? It's to create. Uh, images in the mind based on sound and sound effect. I mean, the, what audio does best is activate the imagination of the listener. And so, if, if you want to, you know, if, if you want to bore the listener, just you know, recite uh, facts one after the other. But if if you use audio well, you paint pictures with words. And the listener's imagination is activated, and they see uh, <clears throat> what you are, the story that you're telling. And um, getting, uh, getting people to uh, see uh, with words uh, is, a, is a marvelous art. There's also another level to it, um, the intimacy of audio. There's something um, uh, less intimate about television, about film, than about audio when you're listening kind of one-to-one, -one, even though it's one-to-many. What's your take on that? Yeah, you're right. It is intimate uh, more so because um, because it's asking you to use your imagination. You're actually building the story inside your own head. And so you are as if in that world, surrounded. It's almost like, uh, you know, those... Uh, virtual reality helmets, mm -hmm. that, you know, right? That causes you to be immersed in a world. Uh, stories told uh, in audio immerse you in that world, whereas television's over there. The movie's up there on the big screen. And so there's a, there's a literal space between so you and the story. That world of my imagination is mine alone in a sense, right? Yes, you get to create it your way. And so when you know when you hear uh, when you hear somebody described as good looking, well, you get to paint that picture, and it's the best looking person you can, <laughs> you can imagine. So, um, yeah, yeah, and it, it 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 is very involving. It is intimate and very involving. So, I, what confuses me in that context is why uh, advertisers, kind of you know the the storytellers of commerce don't use the medium of audio more effectively to paint those pictures you're describing in 30 or 60 seconds, given the opportunities you've just outlined. Why don't we hear more audio advertisements, as it were, that are stories and that fulfill that kind of uh, vision? Well, I suspect, although I've not done a study of it, I suspect that they are trapped in the old-fashioned name-copy ethics. Uh, they think that what you're supposed to do is drop the name of the product into that 30 seconds as frequently as possible, as loud as possible, 
whatever. And that name copy is still uh, the modus operandi of most advertising everywhere, um, uh, but especially on radio. And um, I also know, as you were saying, story is difficult. Uh, to um, to hook interest with a story on radio, hold it and pay it off in 30 seconds with a little um, uh, turning point climax requires creativity. I mean, I have to sit down, I have to do the hard work and use their imagination to create something in the listener's imagination, uh, whereas name copy can knock that off in an hour, you know. So, um, and so it's, it's difficult and... Uh, but the payoff is that when you take the pains and you do it really well and you um, really hook the listener's imagination uh, and then deliver the name, you know, at, there's a moment, see, there's a moment in a story when the story reaches its climax and the question how will this turn out is answered. There's a moment there where the mind of the listener is absolutely open to anything you want to put in it. That, as they go, how will this turn out? Uh Uh-huh, I see, Uh uh-huh. Oh, my. Oh, really? And at that moment, anything you say sticks like glue. Because the mind is opened up at that that critical climactic moment. It's, It's now available. And when you put the name of the product in the mind, at that point, it sticks. And, I mean, this has been... This is science. I mean, for the last 30, 40 years, people have been studying, you know, neuro, neuroscience has been studying the effect of narrative on the mind and how, how when, so, when something goes out of balance, a certain nodule in the brain lights up with curiosity going, wow, how will this turn out? And it works in the mind. I mean, they, they trace the effect of cause and effect of positive, negative, positive, negative, dynamic in the brain, and then comes the climax, and a certain chemical reaction at climax, when that big question is answered, opens up the mind to whatever you want to put in it. And that's why we tell fairy tales to children. That's why, you know, because when you tell a good, you know, story, and then at the end of, you know, Hansel and Gretel, you say, and that's why you should never go in the woods alone. <laughs> Kids get it. So, um, and so a, a beautifully told story has that moment at the climax when anything you put in the um, in the telling at that point registers. Um, but to achieve that, as I said, takes a lot of creative effort. Um, I want to before you go. I want to ask you uh, briefly about uh, the event uh, in LA on March 19. It's called yeah. Story in Business. It's a sem- seminar, a one-day seminar. It's in L.A. It's March 19. I'm going to be there. Everybody should be there. Um, why? Who should come to this, and why? Well, the, the um, I think the, we have a uh, the title of this uh, event on the 19th is now called Storynomics, and Storynomics I think is the ideal term apropos of what we were just talking about. Uh, it's the use of um, story to communicate story form to communicate outward into the market and inward into your company uh, in order to improve the economics of your company, in order to, to uh, increase your sales uh, and uh, to increase harmony and collaboration uh, and build strategy for business. And so uh, anyone who's got, you know, uh, who's a working uh, at a responsible level in a business uh, and needs to communicate up and down the ladder of that business. Anybody in marketing, certainly, who's out trying to brand, trying to market, advertising, sales, all of those stories told outward. Um, anyone with their, who's a business, private business owner who's got their own you know, personal enterprise, they end up having to be you know, executive and worker on all those levels. And so it's for anyone in business who wants to learn how a much more effective technique of communication, who wants to be able to storify their story, their 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 powerpoints, um, 
in order to um, move people to act, to do what you need people to do. Uh, story is the most powerful tool for persuasion. And so everybody in a business has to persuade somebody. You have to employ, you know, at least persuade your secretary or the, the, the staff. You have to pers- go up to the board of directors occasionally and make a presentation. You're always trying to persuade people to act the way you need them to act on your vision, on your strategy, for your purposes. And so um, anyone who's in commerce, or government for that matter, I mean anybody who has uh, is in a position where there are people above them and below them that they have to persuade people outside the organization, like customers, that they have to persuade uh, Fundamentally, what Storynomics does is teach you how to use story to improve the economics of your company and your career. The event is called Storynomics. The man, and I mean the man, is Robert McKee. Um, It's on March 19 in L.A. Everybody go, I'm going to be there. Robert's going to be there. Please join us. Robert, thank you so much for your time today. Thank you, Mark. It was a pleasure.